Hi everyone. You are all welcome to this platform. In today's video, I'll be presenting the solution of the inequation 2x plus 1 less than the absolute value of x plus 5. Yes, when this question comes up at the advanced level GCE examination, most students find it very difficult. And this is what some of them will do. They will start by squaring both sides. They will say, okay, if um, 2x plus 1 is less than the absolute value of x plus 5, then 2x plus 1 all squared will be less than x plus 5 all squared. Yes, most of them do this because they know that the absolute value of x plus 5 is equal to the square root of x plus 5, all this squared. And if you simplify both sides, you are going to obtain 4x squared plus 4x plus 1, which is less than x squared plus 10x plus 25. And further simplifying gives us x squared minus 2x minus 8, which is less than 0. <clears throat> yeah, this is a quadratic inequation. And if you factorize the left-hand side, we are going to obtain x plus 2 into x minus 4, which is less than 0. And this gives us two critical values, negative 2 and positive 4. So this will mean that negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 4. So this is what most of them will obtain as their solution set. X such that negative 2 is less than x, which is less than 4. Good. Now, is this solution correct? Is this answer correct? Remember, whenever you are asked to find the set of values for which a given inequation is satisfied, you are actually doing so in the set of real numbers, you are looking for that subset of real numbers that would satisfy that given inequation. And if you finally present your answer, no other value should satisfy the given inequation if it is not coming from your solution. Now, let me pick a number which is not in this solution set and verify whether it satisfies the inequation or not. I'll pick a number, say, negative 3. If I take negative 3 and I substitute in the above inequation, I'm going to obtain 2 times negative 3 plus 1, which is less than the absolute value of negative 3 plus 5. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, which is less than negative 3 plus 5 is 2, and the absolute value of 2 is just 2. Now, is negative 5 less than 2? Of course, it is. Meaning that negative 3 normally was supposed to be part of our solution. But this range starts from negative 2 and ends at 4. And so negative 3 is not part of the solution. So this solution is not, com it's not correct. It's incomplete. It's incomplete. So remember... 2x plus 1 can take any real value. But the absolute value of x plus 5 will always be positive. Meaning it can lead to a situation like this. And so if you have negative 5 to be less than 2, and you go ahead to square both sides, this is what you are going to obtain. You are going to obtain 25 to be less than 4, which is not true which is not true. So it is not true that whenever 2x plus 1 is less than the absolute value of x plus 5, then the square of 2x plus 1 will always be less than the square of x plus 5. So this method is wrong. It's a wrong method. So if you present this method in the GCE, obviously you are going to have 0 for the method mark. And if your method is 0, your accuracy marks will all be 0. So it's not this method should not be recommended for students. 
So this is what you are supposed to do. When you are asked to solve such inequations that contain the absolute value function, you need to first of all start by defining the absolute value function that appears in the equation. So here we have the absolute value of x plus 5. And we know that the absolute value of x plus 5 is defined like this. x plus 5, if x is greater than or equal to negative 5, or negative into x plus 5, if x is less than negative 5. Yes, you can recall the definition of the absolute value of x that I gave in the previous video. If you did not watch the video, please, I would like you to go back and watch. Okay, now, notice that they said x such that x is less than negative 5. I'm taking the second branch. Union. They said x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 5 is actually equal to the set of real numbers. And so, like I said, whenever you are asked to find the set of values for which a given inequation is satisfied, you are actually looking for those subsets of R or that subset of R that will satisfy the given inequation. So for this particular equation, the set R has been partitioned into two sets, this and this. Let's call this A and we call this B. So, in this question, we are actually looking for that subset of A that satisfies that above inequation, and we are also looking for that subset of B that satisfies the above inequation. Let's call the subset of A, A prime, and that subset of B that will satisfy the inequation, we call it B prime. So, at the end, if you find A prime and B prime, we are going to get the union of these two sets in order to have our solution set. And so, how do we look for A prime? To look for A prime, you must start with the set A. The set A says that x is less than negative 5. And if x is less than negative 5 from this definition, the absolute value of x plus 5 will just be equal to negative into x plus 5. And so, our inequation reduces to 2x plus 1, which is less than negative into x plus 5. And this implies that 2x plus 1 is less than negative x minus 5. And if you simplify this, we're going to obtain 3x, which is less than negative 6. And by dividing both sides by 3, we're going to have x, which is less than negative 2. Now, is this... A subset of this. Most of the times, students may not see it directly, but at this level, it is always important to represent these two sets on, on the number line so that you can pick out only those elements from this set that lies in this set. Okay, this is our number line. Let's call this negative 5. Negative 2 should be somewhere behind. Remember, negative 2 is greater than negative 5. And then we can put 0. Okay, so this set says that x is less than negative 5. So this is the set we're dealing with. x is less than negative 5. And this is what we have just obtained. We have seen that in this particular set, all values less than negative 2 will satisfy the above inequation. So it's good we also represent this on the same number line. Okay, so what do you see? For what we have just obtained, all values less than negative 5 will satisfy the above inequation. So you're actually looking for the intersection of this and this. And you discover that the intersection is just the set A. And therefore, our A prime 
is just the set A, which is X, such that X is less than negative 5. So all these values will satisfy the above in equation. Next, we, we go to B. They said B says that X is greater than or equal to negative 5. And from the above definition, if X is greater than or equal to negative 5, then the absolute value of X plus 5 will just be equal to X plus 5. And so if X is greater than or equal to negative 5, the above inequation reduces to 2X plus 1, which is less than X plus 5. And if you simplify this, you are going to obtain X, which is less than 4. We do the same. We take the intersection of this and this. And we're going to do so still using a number line. So we have negative 5. 0 is somewhere in the middle. And then we have 4. Good. So if x is greater than or equal to negative 5, remember negative 5 is part of the set, so we use a closed circle. And we draw an arrow pointing to the right. And this is what we have obtained. We have seen that in this set, only values less than 4 will satisfy the given inequation. So this is why we have. Good. So what then is our set B prime? B prime is the intersection of these two sets. So we are saying that B prime is equal to the set X such that negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 5 is part of the set less than or equal to x which is strictly less than 4. Good. So we now have our a prime and our b prime. So what then is the solution to the above inequation? Therefore, a prime union b prime is given by x such that x is less than negative 5 union x such that negative 5 is less than or equal to x, which is strictly less than 4. And if you find the union of these two sets, you are going to obtain the set x such that x is less than negative, sorry, x is less than 4. You remember, you can still do this by representing these two sets on a normal line. Like this. So here we have negative 5 can represent 0 somewhere here, and then 4. So I'll start by representing the set x less than negative 5. So this is what I have. And then I will represent the set negative 5 less than or equal to x less than 4. So it starts from negative 5, including negative 5, up to 4. Remember, at this level, we are not looking for the intersection. We are looking for the union of these two sets. And this union gives us all elements from 4 downwards. From 4 down to negative 5, including negative 5, and from negative 5 downwards. Therefore, we are saying that the solution to the above inequation is just x such that x is less than 4. Good. So this is the correct solution. So please go through the method once more. And if there is any question, leave the question in the comment section. I'll get back to you. This question can also be solved by using the graphical method. And to solve this question using the graphical method, you need to draw the graph of y equal to 2x plus 1 and the graph of the absolute value of x plus 5 on the same axis. This is the graph I have produced. This one is the graph of the absolute value of x plus, uh, the absolute value of x plus 5, and this is the straight line y equal to 2x plus 1, this one. So after drawing this, how do we obtain the solution of the above inequation? How do you obtain the solution of this inequation? Remember, the inequation reads 
2x plus 1 is less than the absolute value of x plus 5. So to obtain the solution to this inequation, you are simply reading off those values of x for which the graph of 2x plus 1 lies below the graph of the absolute value of x plus 5. If you start from the right, you see the graph is inset above. But when you come right down to this value, the value of x there is 4, the value goes below the graph of the absolute value of x plus 5. So it goes below at 4. And from 4 downwards, it remains below. Therefore, we are saying that if 2x plus 1 is less than the absolute value of x plus 5, then x should be less than 4. Then x should be less than 4. Therefore, our solution set will just be x such that x is less than 4. So both methods lead to the same answer. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe to this channel because subsequently I'll be uploading very important uh, theorems in mathematics. I'll be uploading the famous Lithe theorem and its applications. I'll also be uploading the Euler's theorem, which is the generalized form of the famous theorem. And I'll end with the Chinese remainder theorem. So please do not forget to hit the not notification bells so that whenever these videos are uploaded, you'll be the first to be notified. Thank you very much.